Hey folks, it's Mike from Simulate, and with me today is Ilan Kalendrov, who is one of our lead researchers in our offensive research team here at Simulate. And we are going to be talking about a, a recent technique discovery that uh, Ilan and the team made, and that would be what we here at Simulate are terming blindside. So Ilan, first question. Um, the blindside technique in um, you know a minute or so, a couple sentences. How would you describe it? Where uh, okay, so basically what we were doing is uh, making the EDR blind here. So we are actually unhooking uh, anti DLL with hardware breakpoints, and uh, this gives us the ability to, to execute any function from within anti DLL without the EDR knowing it. And you had mentioned that even though this was done with NTDLL and it was completely hooked, that's not necessarily the only thing that this technique could do. Uh, it could partially hook something, it could use other DLLs, is that correct? Yeah, so I've made an extension uh, that works now uh, where I could unhook uh, a specific uh, function from NTDLL. So there's EDRs that uh, alerting when we you hook the entire NTDLL. So I've come up with a new solution to unhook a specific function uh, that could potentially give me the ability to do, for example, shell code loading, etc. Interesting. And I think you had mentioned that this is something that is going to t continue to evolve, that this is just the beginning of really understanding this technique. Yeah, so potentially I could uh, I could control what DLLs are being loaded to the debug process. So if I could control that, they, that would give me the ability to unhook every DLL I, I would want, basically. It sounds great. So we do have a write-up on this that uh, is going to be available at the same time as our interview is. Uh, but I think seeing it might even be more powerful, and you've got your... Uh, virtual desktop up here. Did you want to walk through actually running this and showing what it does? Yeah. So I'll run the executable with the stealth mode here. So we have an EDR in this uh, system. I've put a system pause here because I wanted to attach the debugger and show us that we actually do have a breakpoint here. Uh, uh, excuse me, a, uh, a hook. Okay. So for example, if we, we search the function uh, anti-create-thread-ex, we could see we have a jump instruction here, meaning the function is indeed booked. Um, so if I'll continue our program here, um, and we will go again, we can see we removed the hooked function, and uh, now I could use and execute this function, and the EDR won't know what I did from this function here. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. We found the, we created the debug process. We found the address for the function we want to put a hybrid breakpoint on. Uh, in this case, it would be LDR low DLL. Um, and then we are uh, copying the uh, specific function uh, with this address. And uh, that's it, basically. Great. So not that it's all doom and gloom. I mean, there are some ways to mitigate against this, if I understand. Yeah, so an EDR could check uh, in the debug registries if we have, uh, for example, a function that's inside the DR1 uh, debug registry that could potentially uh, uh, alarm the EDR that that person is trying to hook uh, a specific function with hardware breakpoints. Um, that's one way to uh, mitigate this problem. And if I remember correctly, and we won't mention any names, of course, but there are already some EDR products that can sort of detect that type of register behavior. Yeah. So, for example, if I open up a, a new process in debug mode, um, uh, I'm using a specific a specific function, set thread hook, that uh, that is basically can uh, say that this process uh, is trying to uh, access that memory of that child process he opened. Okay. And that would allow uh, not only the, the endpoint detection and response to, to terminate it, but it could relay that information to something like a SIM 
to uh, see if this is something that's happening on multiple devices or somebody's attempting this as part of a larger attack, right? Yeah, if they have integration with the SIM, like the EDR with the SIM, they could potentially give this information to them and search laterally inside the environment. And there's one thing that you did mention that I found interesting. The, the general theory of operations of this type of attack is not new. Even though this technique is new, it's something that was you just discovered. Uh, but the idea of using these sort of hardware breakpoints has been done before, if I remember correctly. Right. So uh, there's POCs online that uh, people are using hardware breakpoints, but they're using it just to, for example, uh, change syscode functions, parameters, uh, etc. And they're doing it inside their own process. So. That technique is utilizing remote hardware breakpoint um, that all, that like use a remote hardware breakpoint on a debug process, uh, and that's not from what I search online. That's not existed yet. Great, uh, so new technique for a known methodology, uh, which is you know, it seems like it is expanding its ability to be used for offensive purposes. So it is always good to know about. Um, and we've notified Microsoft, of course, about this, but even though we've been doing, th during today's discussion, looking mostly at Windows, in theory, this could work on other operating systems as well, uh, not with DLLs, obviously, but similar method. I mean, yeah, in theory, because we are using actually hardware, hard hardware breakpoints here that utilizes debug registers. Those registers are inside the CPU level, inside the... Uh, in x64 CPU level. So potentially we could use this technique inside a Linux environment, for example. It makes sense. Um, so yeah, there you have it, folks. This is a new technique, which we're calling blindside because it does render itself invisible to many different uh, EDR defensive uh, tools. And uh, this is one of the many things that the Simulate Offensive Threat Research Group uh, has been working on lately. and. We are happy to share it with all of you so that everyone can be better protected in the long run. Look for this in Simulate. Uh, it is already in advanced scenarios. Uh, so for those customers who are using that module, they can start using testing with it right away. Uh, but we'll make its way into other modules as well over time. Thanks again, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.